Uh, coming back to uh, Prof. Uh, John, um, you know, I think uh, not many people understand environment and how important it is huh, with uh, dementia <laughs> patients. And uh, while you mentioned about uh, the way that we can plan for it, you know, in terms of uh, maybe buildings uh, and the campus style, um, is there some simple things where, you know, if a, a member here has you know, a dementia senior or a patient, uh, what are the little things they can do uh, to make that environment, the immediate environment, uh, you know, less daunting uh, to a mild cognitive uh, dementia patient? Do you have some um, kind of tips or advice for them? Yes, I think. Yes, thank you. Uh, just uh, some simple uh, design ideas, right? First of all, uh, perception and cognition is a very uh, challenging uh, task for people with mild dementia. Uh, and uh, cognitive impairment and so forth. So having contrasting kind of uh, uh, surfaces, right? For instance, the toilet bowl, I think you might have already heard of that, right? The toilet seat cover should be a different color from the bowl so that the person with dementia can recognize that this is the toilet seat, right? So things like that. I think these are very simple measures. Then, of course, then there are the safety kind of uh, measures like having grab bars and which, which supports the age, aging as, as a general kind of uh, feature. But for me, I think the larger kind of challenge is really how to bring that kind of uh, design challenges into the larger realm of a neighborhood. And this is where we need to, for instance, uh, integrate with the software part as well. Maybe uh, the Dementia Friendly Community uh, Initiative, you heard of that, right? Uh, how do you train the community to recognize people with dementia? How do they then uh, work with the people with dementia to calm them down and so forth, so forth? Uh, so the hardware and the software to uh, be coupled together. But basic design features, I think, has been discussed a lot. So I don't think I want to elaborate too much. Yeah. Okay, I think uh, you... Yeah, I think uh, we, we have um, both the hardware part, which uh, just now, you know, Kelly mentioned, and then there's also the services that Malaysia mentioned. So um, this very common question that comes out is, you know, technology is too cold. How to make it more human, the values, so that even a dementia patient will feel themselves as uh, independent as possible. Uh, maybe they are on their own world, in their own world, but nonetheless, th there are some lapses that uh, they may have and uh, they can be normal. So um, can you try to expound on the human value part of it on your services? And then maybe Kelly, well, whoever ready, uh, either the hardware side or the services side can talk about the human values that uh, you, know, you, you will put into your technology or services. Whoever on the goes first. Yeah, so I, like I briefly mentioned earlier, you know, underlying all the services that we deliver, whether it's your ADL support, whether it's sitting down and engaging with an individual, understanding their, what music they used to love and all of that stuff, is the technology. And technology is the enabler. But at the end of the day, it's about, uh, it, we are sending care pros, we are sending human beings into their homes and delivering that care. So the way that we manage our care pros is, you know, we're highly strict in the way that we allow them to join us. Um, the, the entrance, you know, we only accept about 5% of all, all our applicants. How many do you have now that are dementia um, trained, roughly? I, I don't, I don't so know right now, that. across our pool in Singapore, we have about 1,000 care pros uh, with different skill sets, with different quality. We also uh, provide services to um, the, the VWOs, similar to, to what Kelly does as well, um, to dementia care homes, dementia centres, and of course with that, you know, the philosophy of care for a lot of these dementia organisations is always about enabling and empowering, but never overdoing it. And I think when we, when we start overdoing it for them and we have that mindset like, oh, we got to do it for them and we got we to gotta be in charge of that care, we, we don't realise that we are taking away the ability for them to, to maintain that well-being. So again, technology is an enabler. Uh, but at the end of the day, that human process and that human touch is so important. And that's why at HomeH, we, we truly invest a lot in, um, in, in bringing in the right people. Okay. And uh, Kelly, about yep. technology and value, human values? Yes. <clears throat> so I, I echo what uh, Melissa is saying. Because one of the things about uh, Neuro is that you need to have a human trainer that's certified to uh, carry on the training itself. You can't just give the technology to someone and say, okay, just do it. It's not going to work, right? Because there are so many factors of human factors like 
uh, human nature, right? Like, if this game is hard, you know, I won't play it anymore, right? But well, you need to actually play the games that are hard for you because that's where you're training your brain in a particular area. So and the, the human factor is very important. Um, secondly, I think using the technology as an enabler to um, create more ways for the youth. I think just now in my slide, I was, I was talking about it, right? An e-sports kind of thing where you have the youth have a different channel instead of us talk, you know, just talking about stories of the past or maybe playing you know, bingo or whatever they, they, they play with the, you know, together with the seniors. There's a new avenue here for them to use technology, which they are very, of course, comfortable with the youths, right? Which is the, you know, the iPad and the games. And, and using that as a way to engage the seniors who are very interested to understand what is this technology that, that you know, the youths are doing in a, in a way that they're comfortable with, which is mahjong, card games, uh, different things that they are, they are very um, more comfortable in, in, in uh, accepting. So I think this is something that um, uh, I just you know, really echo Melissa, which is the human touch has to be there, regardless of whether the hardware or software, the, that human has, has to use this technology to engage the seniors. Okay, that's a very good question here um, about the interaction. How often do they put this on? You know, and then looks like somebody from outer space <laughs> playing with it, like, right? I think we, we, you know, you know, some of some of the seniors they don't want to even the the robots they don't want to carry a, a, a you know a star toy and it looks like you know how old am I really carrying a star toy walking around and now you're asking to put on this headgear right so how often we see the merits of it obviously I mean you know but how often and you know minimally minimally is one hour a week a week one, one hour a week minimum. that sounds like very low ROI I pay I pay for it and then play. Play minimum. Maybe one hour minimum. minimum. Maximum, no. There's no maximum, but you know, it's just like <laughs> any exercise. You, you overdo it, it's not going to be useful. So I would say, yeah, minimum. you don't want to be addicted to it. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. right. John minimum, right. minimum. Yes. But but we we well, based on the research, based yes. on the, on the science that we've seen, um, the best outcome is actually 15 hours a month. Oh, okay. That's the best hours, outcome. Uh, yeah. Right. How about uh, Dr. Tan? You, you, you seem to also have uh, agree with some of the points that they mentioned on the human values and the effectiveness part. Uh, do you have any, any, any tips when it comes to technology? How often you know, uh, it comes in useful and so that it's not overdone and the human uh, touch is still there? So like I mentioned, uh, the technology either supports the patient, the caregivers or the service providers. So, in a sense that uh, if the technology is making, like just now check yourself, they are using it every day just to guide them through their day-to-day -day life. So, that will be uh, consistent and we can actually um, basically customize each chatbot to the person. Mm. That's why I show you just now the chatbot for health. That's for customization of your own chatbot. It's just click and drag, you just put all the information inside and that guy, the, the person with dementia can actually use. So customization is important. And like I said, what are the problems that you're looking at? Is it cognitive impairment? Mm. If, let's say the patient has psychiatric problem, using Euro may be a bit scary for them mm. also. Yeah. So depending on what the clinical situation is, what the person is like, how we help him or her. Okay. All right. I think we only have two minutes left, so I'm going to give everyone an opportunity to probably say your wish list uh, and how uh, you know you think uh, technology is going to help. Uh, maybe starting with John. Uh, yeah. Yeah. My wish list is very simple. As I say, uh, we are user of technology rather than inventor. So if uh, anybody who think that you have the kind of a technological solution. Uh, that can support the kind of work that we do in improving the environment for people with dementia. By all means, come and talk to us. Uh, we are very keen to work with you. I'll, I'll go. Um, yeah, so I think for me, it's really about looking, not as we move into a more tech and innovative uh, society, it's about really still looking back at people with dementia and truly understanding what their needs are. We see a lot of products out there that are not truly person-centered and I think um, you know as much as possible let's let's try and stay away from that uh, so truly look at the individual design around their, their needs um, and of course personally for me for seniors and people with dementia to be able to age in place uh, within the communities my uh, our particular wish list is actually to help as many people as possible so if you know any uh, senior homes, senior related organizations, charities, foundations, 
who believe that they can make a difference uh, to these seniors. Uh, we're looking for such collaborators um, to be able to help to get this technology as far as, as possible, not just in Singapore, but many other countries like China, Japan, Korea, where the aging population is actually um, you know, rapidly rising. So these are you know, a couple of wish lists. Um, for me, if we are dealing with persons with dementia, we need all of us, not just one. So uh, it must be holistic. You must understand the person. That's why at the end of the year, we have an LDEX uh, conference and uh, exhibition. We are trying to pull all the service provider, all the technology platform to give the person or our industry partners an idea of what is available. Because a lot of times we don't know what we don't know. We don't know what is available. So probably this will be one of the first uh, exhibition and expo for elder care. Eldex 2000, I think it's in, it's in Suntech. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much uh, everyone. Thanks for your patience uh, to stay behind and listen to uh, the talk on dementia and sharing. Uh, thanks again to all the panelists.